orange peel, dirt nibs, runs, picture framing, and fish eyes. These are the five things that you're going to need to know how to correct after you're finished painting your car. And we're going to show you why we like to use this in our process. Drip, a sag, whatever you guys want to call it, they're really all the same thing. It's just an excessive amount of clear coat that has built up in an area. And in this instance, it was the way that the panel was laying and even me who is painting more proficiently, sometimes you have areas that are just harder to get to than others and you end up with these sags. It's not a big deal unless you leave it. We pick a very hard acrylic block. These are made by Jason Kilmer. If you guys are looking for him, you can find him on Instagram and he hand makes all these acrylic blocks. They're nice because they're very small, they're very detailed and they're hard. He actually grinds every edge of them so that way you're not cutting into the panel. There's a few different things you want to take into consideration dependent on the run. Now let's use a sag as an example. A sag is not really going to have like an excessive drip like this one does. This one actually is to the point where it's dripped all the way off and is hanging. The big thing here is making sure that this clear has had enough time to dry or that you have baked it that it's become hard and I even think that if you have baked the panel it's still going to be like a rubber ball. If you give this a good couple weeks if you can the more time the better this becomes hard and then it's more like taking off shaved ice than it is trying to sand a rubber ball. What we're going to be using is 320 grit you can use 400 grit there's no real science to this you're just you need to use something that's aggressive enough that you can see when you sand the high points of the run and the reason that i say that is is because if some guys want to use a razor blade and they come in here and try to attack the run before they've actually sanded it down and that's problematic because if you have a drip that has that ball at the end of it and this razor blade grabs the ball it will actually rip a perfect hole all the way down to the base coat and you'll be recoating the whole panel. So in order to eliminate that problem, we are actually going to take this little block and we are going to run right on the highest point. So this ball that we have here, I'm just going to very lightly stay right on the ball. I'm not looking to sand the whole area down. We just want to bring the mountain range down carefully and slowly don't push too hard especially if this is soft you want to be more gentle if it's newer of a paint job if it's been sitting a few weeks or even months usually you're good to go but you can just whittle this nub down to where it's close to flat and as soon as you see it start hitting on either side which we don't have you don't have to really slow down or think too much about it. If your clear is too soft it will start clogging the paper right away. This has I think had about a month to cure and it's been pretty hot. It's probably 100 degrees right now so we really kind of have our own self baking out here. Wipe this off so you guys can kind of see. Now we're starting to get to the point where we can see the very top and the side of the run is now on the same plane. I still would not use the razor blade if you have a very sharp run like that. A lot of times you want to just carefully work out that big ball before you actually work it down beyond that. If you're doing this wet you can, it's just going to take you a little longer where if you use dry you can see it a lot easier. It's going to cut it faster and this is a pretty aggressive, like if you're using a collision clear like a 4 to 1 clear, I don't recommend using uh, a super aggressive 320 especially if you're new to this because the outside perimeter you'll end up burning through. This is the VC5700 from PPG and as we bring it down it's a 2 to 1 clear, it's a lot thicker. I've got five coats on this fender so I know I have a big grace period before I have an issue. You're trying to keep the block directly over the highest point, 
try not to hit the sides like we've done out here. Those are just barely kissing the sides and just focus on wearing it down evenly. You should also be hearing your paper cutting really nice. If it's worn out, it, and it very well could plug easily, you're going to have more of a problem burning an area around than you are actually cutting the run itself down. If you're new and you've got a sharp body line, take your tape and you can just protect that high point in the panel. That way you know. You can always run tape outside of your area if you wanted to. You can build a border. This is just going to help give you a little bit of barrier if you're not comfortable with it. I'll go right up to it. Now you can pretty much go to town and not have to sweat it. Here we have everything on the same plane. We've removed all of our very sharp edges. And now, if you want to take a blade, you don't want to be using the blade unless it's super dry. And I like to hold it with two fingers. I hold it right over the center hole of the razor blade. And you need to be holding it lightly enough that the blade, no matter where it goes, is self, it's finding parallel with the shape of the panel. This being on a curve, it's a lot more problematic, but really what you're looking to do is grind on the run perpendicular to the run, and you wanna be moving when you come down on the panel and as you come off. What happens is a lot of guys put it down and then they pull, and they end up with a cut line or chatter. If the run is too soft, you will see that chatter as you are scraping it. And a lot of times when you actually get to actually color sand and polish it down, you will, you will still see that chatter. You have to sand it a lot farther to be able to remove it. That's why this is, sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the shape of your run. I like these for really flat runs that are maybe on a big flat, say you're doing a C10 bedside and you just want to shave it down flat and easy. I don't really particularly like the razor blade on a curve, but I will show you guys how it works. You can see I'm moving constantly and it's shaving it just like dry, like shaved ice. You can also see that where I'm actually touching it, it's no longer white. It's more of the blue color starting to, it's not the color, it's just a different grit, so to speak because it's not 320. And I'm just using this to kind of shave down the bulk of it. Because it's a lot faster than even the 320 in my opinion. There's quite a bit on there. So what you're looking for here is when you get it close, you should start seeing this wear evenly off. And when you're just working one little spot, I kind of like to have a nice even flow, short stroke but fast, and you're coming down, swiping it, and back up, almost like a circle, but a very tight one. A lot of times I see guys that use, they might use a block that are these rubbery or flexible blocks, and that will work to get the bulk of the run out, but the problem is is you end up wearing everywhere around the run down and a lot of times the run is not where you burn it's right outside the run where it becomes thin that's why an acrylic block staying right in your area now that we're down close you can remove your tape we can come in and just short strokes to find where your run is don't be going the whole distance if you don't need it This run goes clear out to the side. So we've zipped through with 320 and I barely, I like to take this to almost the last five or 10% of almost flat. It's just easier having a, I always like to use the analogy of uh, excavators 
would you rather dig down a mountain range flat with a shovel or use the excavator? The grits, think of those as the excavator. The bigger the grit, the more you're going to be taking and just leveling the field. So here we are going to be using the Merca. This is the white guide coat. Some You can use black. This color, we can use white or black. doesn't really matter, but obviously if you were using a black paint job, you would want the white. And if you were doing the white, you'd want the black. So I'm going to coat this really, really good. And what this is doing is it's going into those nice deep 320, 400 scratch, whatever you guys wanted to use. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the exact same block. The other thing too is being on a curve like this, it's a little bit more tricky. You can see the difference in these two blocks is you're a quarter inch on one and about an eighth to a sixteenth on the other one. This one will flex over the curve of the panel a little bit better, but I still have that little 10% that I want to get out all the way. And the other thing is if you have good lighting around your run, when you're actually wet sanding, you will see the area that still has the clear. Like right here, we have one little spot where there's no guide coat that's going to stick to it because it's still the original clear. That is your baseline of we know out here we don't have a run, so that is the lowest point that we have down there. It's the same amount of clear as it is over here. We shouldn't have to worry about that as long as you have stayed on the high point. We're going to wrap this 600 grit that we're going to take out the 320 scratches. You can totally upgrade with other grits slower if you want to. Me, I just find be a little bit more consistent with your sanding and pay attention to what the guide coat is telling you and you'll get it all out. I'm going to use a squirt bottle here for lubricity. I've got a couple drops of dish soap in there to just kind of help keep it going. And as we sand this, your 320 scratch will still be seen if it still is in there. Otherwise, these are all going to convert to a 600 scratch. And obviously, if your run is going this direction and has a high point over a flat area, you're going to want to be putting the block across. You don't ever want to cut out a speed bump, as I call it, long-wise. Otherwise, that speed bump will always be there. You want to turn it and go against the speed bump that's there and make sure that you have completely cut that out. A lot of times I'll put it at about a 30 degree angle to the run and I actually work the run itself out in the shape of the panel. That way you don't have any halo or shadowing that happens from that little tiny bit that a lot of people don't get all the way out. And a lot of that is because people usually stop at about a thousand grit and a thousand grit's not usually going to cut it out as nice as a 600 or a 320. If we dry it off, you can see one tiny little spot. I don't know if that shows up in the camera or not. One very hint right in the smack in the center and I'm just going to be staring, focusing. We want to make sure that every pass counts. Jason Kilmer, when he teaches this stuff too, that's his biggest thing is making every pass count. If you can't tell every single pass where that is, then you need to be drying it off or get a squeegee and wipe it so that way you can see this little spot of clear that is still not hit. We want everything to be the same all the way through. And if I stare at that spot, I can actually see that spot even with it wet. So this is what I mean by making every pass count. The other thing is, if you're going to take it up in grits, which we know we are, we're not going to polish 600. Sometimes if you have thin clear, maybe you used a collision clear and you want to make sure you don't take too much in the beginning, well, then start working up the grits slower as you go through them. Leave just, I mean, a hint to be able to take it out at the end. That way you don't have an area outside of your run. The biggest thing is just focusing on staying on that run. The next thing we're going to do is get into picture framing. What is picture framing? Why does it matter? It matters because if you guys have followed our videos on all this body work that you've done, blocking a panel, panel to panel, 
So if it means the skirt to this quarter panel or fender, we need to make sure that looks like a mirror. Uh, picture frame is where when you're painting your panel, every edge usually gets built up with clear. Now what I have is the same thing that we did with the run. I have 320 back on here. This is where it gets hairbally, and I would say use 320 if you're very experienced with this. Use 600 if you're just trying to do this for the first time. What you want to do here is you want to be positioning the block, again, perpendicular to your speed bump that has ended up on the edge. All the edges always end up built up with clear as you go through the whole panel because a lot of times you're doing a jam and then you're coming in over the top and this always gets hit twice and that's why it's building up. Some collision guys will come short of it to try to eliminate some of this, but it's, it's more uniform if you can be consistent with this. We're gonna take that 320 and I just wanna make sure that your finger, as you guys are on this block, it's going to ride over the edge of where that speed bump is. I want you guys to be able to see exactly what I'm referring to. 320 is very aggressive, but it shows up a lot better on camera. So that's why I'm doing it this way for you guys. Now, you can see where there is nothing hitting around the perimeter of this body line. That could be a body line that's a point in the middle of a fender. It could be this, it could be the edge of a door, whatever, fender. If you spend the time to remove that buildup on your edge. When you actually sight the panel down at a car show, you won't have deviations. It will actually, the mirror reflection, if you have everything adjusted correctly, it will look back perfect from where you guys started in body filler. This is pretty much the same exact process. The big thing here is don't tip over. Don't bring your finger beyond because what will happen is you will not get this flat you will just basically roll over the speed bump and you will end up burning that sharp edge. I don't like to have everything super tight and crisp. I always usually wet sand these edges with 600 before paint. That way I have a little bit of a round barrier and not such a tight pattern that's gonna be sharp and burn through easily. So you're just gonna work this down until you don't see that shiny between your edge and your flat part of your panel. And again, making every pass count, you can see right here, I've already pivoted. This is flat. I am gonna continue moving, not making a thin spot. Boom, down to the pass where you see it go away. Now you're done, you can use the Merca guide coat and then you can upgrade to your 600 wet or 1000 or whatever it is you're going to do. If your guys are gonna use 320, you need to make sure you're using a good solid clear with a lot of coats. Just to reiterate it, this has five coats. If you have a four to one collision clear, I do not recommend using 320. You might wanna go start with 600. You could use 600 dry and that'll help you see it. 600 wet, you're not gonna see it as good. Just practice this and use a good quality clear and have enough coats to be able to do this process. We're gonna finish out this little corner right here and then we'll bring you guys in for a dirt nib. When it comes to dirt nibs, all that is is dust somewhere. You could have the most perfect clean room and have a dirty suit. Maybe the dirt was sitting on your paint suit. Maybe you were shooting in a t-shirt shorts and I can tell you because I come from a garage painting uh, DIY type guy. I was not always in a shop and until this day, if I have a suit that's dirty, I will jump right in there with a t-shirt and shorts. Honestly, it comes down to how much do you clean, wipe off your clothes. Did you use a lint roller? Did you blow yourself off? Did your hose hit the ground before you picked it up? Simple things. Put your hose in a something on the wall, hang it over something that's clean, tack cloth the actual hose to make sure you're keeping the dust off. Because a lot of times, the dust that ends up on your panel after you've already tacked it off usually comes from the hose because guys are not thinking, hey, the hose picked up a little dirt nib on the ground and then it fell into the paint. But it's not the end of the world. 
as long as the dirt nib is not that noticeable as far as color goes, I mean, obviously, if you had a bright red chunk of something sitting in here, we're going to see it or a bug. But for a regular dirt nib, I will just go over this little spot right here lightly. All of these things are similar. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the reason that I want to bring up a dirt nib is because if you're using a soft block, that dirt nib is still going to show at the very end of your paint job. Yes, it'll be shiny, but the fact that you didn't cut it all the way out, what we're always looking for is we are always looking for that ring around the nib itself. We need to completely knock that down to the point where it's gone. This, if you're doing collision work, a newer OEM car, you can totally start with a thousand grit, 1200 grit, 1500 grit, whatever you guys want to use to get that all the way out. The big thing is using an acrylic block and going over this little dirt nib and not pushing the dirt nib because once you knock that little piece of dirt out, you don't want to run that through. You want to be flushing it out. So use a garden hose. Don't be using a squirt bottle. And even though I'm using it for just this little spot, when you actually go to wet sand the whole thing, that one little dirt nib could be caught in your paper. That's another reason why it's not good to use those rubber padded holes in that, that pad because as you wrap that paper, the paper is then wrapped around that pad. That pad is now gonna hold all these dust nibs that you've taken out and or dirt that's floating around and it's just gonna continue to scratch your panel. So just use a little bit of water and actually work the dirt nib completely out. We started this one with 600 grit. I know there's a lot of different tools out there like they, we have the Merca uh, tool for taking out runs that's similar to the razor blade. I think it's made out of carbide. Yeah, it works. I wouldn't say it works any better than any of these other processes, but if you guys have something that you guys wanna share, put it in the comments. I know a lot of guys read the comments and they get something out of it that helps somebody then by all means, put it out there. So here, I've gotten it down a lot. The dirt nib I heard come out, but now you have that area that the clear did exactly what the picture framing did on the edge, and it's got a ring around it. So we just have to know where it is and work out that little spot. Maybe you wanted the OEM finish with the orange peel on the car. You could take a really small block like this with 1500 grit, work out the dirt nib and just polish those spots. And then you don't have the dirt nibs, but you still have your OEM finish and this is not gonna be near as noticeable. All right, we've got our dirt nib completely out. You're gonna have those picture frames around all of your holes for moldings, everything. So every one of those has to be addressed to get that finish. And the next thing we're gonna address is the orange peel. Orange peel is caused by a few different variety of things. It could be how you sprayed it out of the gun. It could have been your air pressure that you had out of the gun. The consistency of, of the paint could have been too thick. And also it could be dieback. Well, what is dieback? Dieback is maybe you painted the panel and it looked great the day that you left the booth, the garage, the whatever it is you sprayed the car in. And then over time, it starts looking hazy and looks like an orange peel. That is called dieback. The clear is actually shrinking and what's happening is the reducer that you put in your clear has to exit. Once the clear exits and it dries, this is gonna happen over weeks of time. And really the biggest thing is that when you do this color sand and polish techniques, you need to make sure that the panel is very dry. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that is you can scuff it open with 600 or 1000 whatever you're going to use and you can actually smell the panel and if you smell paint it is still gassing off. That is a good indicator as a starting line but I would say that the longer you can wait to color sand and polish your car up the longer that the finish will hold out. That is why I wanted to cover this because if you painted your car and you waited two days and you start doing this process it is going to look great for about a month. And then as those things start to shrink and start to look more orange peely, you almost end up back at square one where you just don't have the finish that you thought you had. Sometimes where 
in a rush to meet a show and we don't have any other option as to do it and maybe the customer's excited they want it back so that's why i always try to tell people that it's important to not rush the painter because these products take time to dry you have to let them completely cure in order to have the best possible finish at the end when you're taking out orange peel you can start with a thousand you can start with 600 you can start with 2000 if you want the level of knowing what clear you have i can't stress that enough you have to know your clear on how many mils of clear do you have there that you can take down a lot of times the reason that a clear is failing and flaking off is either because it's a cheap clear or it's not put on thick enough as we take this clear down I can tell you from experience that I just don't see the same finish from a thousand grit to 600 grit. As you start to work down the orange peel, we are going to use 600 grit for this entire part, but we also will not want to use a block this small. We've spent all this time body working it flat with the next level blocks. I want to make sure that we use Jason Kilmer's color sanding blocks but I want to be very cautious of what block I pick and what shape that I have. You don't want to be using a very thick, rigid block on an area that's curved. We want to be using a block that actually fits the curvature of the panel. And a lot of times I will just use two fingers to make sure that it curves over the panel. The biggest thing is you have a foam side and you have an acrylic side. The foam side is not going to cut that panel dead flat. A thousand grit, in my opinion, is not going, again, it's my opinion, some guys will argue that, but I would say do a panel with a thousand grit start to finish and do a panel with 600 grit start to finish. We're talking minimally, but there is a difference and the 600 should look flatter if you did it right. So let's take this 600. I'm just going to go over it a couple times here to see what we finish we have. I'm going to use this little block just to kind of show you guys. Here you just want to be using, again, a longer block. I like a block that's about the width of my, the length of my fist. And I will work through in a motion where I'm, <clears throat> I'm cutting out the orange peel until I am seeing it exactly flat. This is where you can use a squeegee. A towel you need to constantly be checking it to make sure you're making every pass count and you're not sanding to the point where it's just not necessary all of these steps that we're going through with the run and everything as we upgrade grits that is what you're going to be doing with this entire panel this is where focusing on how long did it take me to get through the orange peel and being consistent. We sprayed the whole panel consistently, so we want to sand the panel consistently. So if you know, let's just as an example, let's just say it takes 10 swipes to get through to the orange peel. I'm going to have a little bit of overlap as this block moves. So count to yourself 10 swipes and then pivot over one, two, three, four, all the way to 10 and then move over a little bit more. Now that overlap that you're doing by that small motion, you're being very thorough all the way through the panel. And you can make sure that when you get done, you might only have onesie twosie areas that the 600 didn't cut all the orange peel out and then you can just go through and address those areas. You're gonna be going through this whole panel with all the different grits through the process. So just be thorough and use guide coat in between every single grit that you're going to use. The next thing we're going to cover is we're going to talk about fish eyes. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a fish eye in this panel to physically show you, but let's identify what a fish eye is and what does it look like. A dirt nib looks like a nib sticking upward and you can feel the bump in your panel. A fish eye is going to look like a crater where right where the dot is in the center, there is no paint. The fisheye is oil. It's oil in your air compressor line that has made its way through and gotten on the panel as you are spraying. No paint wants to go around that oil speck and you need to make sure that you have a clean system so that way you don't get them. If you're having fisheyes, you either one have an old airline 
you don't have a water separation system, but there's a lot of cool things that you can just add to your, just buy one single water separator and have it mounted on the booth or on the side of your garage and have a brand new airline. I think a lot of times guys use the airline that they've been grinding on the car for the last six months and it's constantly been put through with that oil in the line. It's as simple as just go buy yourself a new airline and worst case scenario, you guys put a filter in your gun. These are disposable filters and what they do is they have a cartridge where inside they have a bunch of little paper things that actually catch it. So this has those little paper things inside that catch it as the air moves through, it catches the oils. This being a fisheye filter, that's what brand it is, is a fisheye filter. This catches every little particulate that you could possibly imagine, whether it been a speck of grime in the hose or oil, water, it catches everything. So this is a really good last line of defense. You're gonna wanna mount that to your gun as close to your gun as you can. I like it like this and I also like to put the swivel, that way you can get into some tighter areas and this is not holding you up from getting into those places. If you get a fisheye and you're in the middle of painting, you really only have a couple options. As your clear starts to kick and dry, I would say if you have onesie twosies where you just need to try to take care of that one issue in that one little spot, you can hammer the clear on right there and as it starts to dry, hopefully it will then become less of a crater to the bottom and it might encapsulate that oil speck. But if the oil speck is big enough, unfortunately you are going to be repainting your panel. A trick that I learned was always have about a quart of waterborne primer. And the reason that we do that is the waterborne primer will not react like a solvent borne primer will. And you can just spot in that spot to cover that speck of oil that is there and then wet sand that area. And a lot of times you might want to use like a 600 dry because it's waterborne. You put water on a waterborne primer, it's going to mess it up. So you either have to do it quickly or use it dry sanded to get rid of it. The biggest thing is you're just encapsulating that speck and moving on with the process and repainting the panel. It almost comes out better every time anyway. So if you guys are flow coating, which is just re-clearing, maybe that helps you with covering that little speck. Just little tips. But a lot of times if you swap the air hose and you put one of those filters in line and drain your air compressor, you'll probably be able to get through a pinch in your garage if you have to. I'm gonna get back to wet sand on this panel in 600. If you guys wanna see what the process is from here all the way through the grits and polishing, check the description and in the comments, we're gonna link that video and that should finish you guys out. We'll see you on the next one.